Podcasting live at the time we recorded it. From the studios in downtown Gulfport, Florida, it's WGAB, The Gabcast. Welcome back to WGAB, The Gabcast, a Gabber newspaper production. I'm Cameron Healy, and this is... I'm Patrick Heinzen. I'm the news and politics reporter for The Gabber, and we are here, as usual, in the Wine House in downtown Gulfport. Today we're going to talk about a Gulfport duo and their radio show Mm -hmm. they're hosting a radio show and we're going to talk about the dog park and everyone's beloved pet (laughs) mayor banjo all right pat let's get into it what's up with this radio show as most people know gulfport is very musical artistic for sure artistic for sure we we're used to in our office hearing somebody playing the saxophone or every tuesday (laughs) Don't be mean. <laughs> I'm not. There's people who play the guitar outside Tuesday. of Sumitra. There's people who are always playing, and yeah. um, there's plenty of people. Obviously, there's a bunch of different venues, and because of that, there's a lot of local musicians, people who hang around here and go to their day job, or maybe their day job is music. But a lot often, of open mics. Yeah, the North End Tap House is yeah. always playing here at the Wine House. They even will have some music sometimes yeah. and down at the brewery. Um, so one of the one of these musicians, his name is Mike Jones, mm-hmm. and his wife, Pat, they are part of a duo called Creative Differences. Yes. And <laughs> they go around the area, and they play at different venues. Um, the Tiki, they play at the Tap House, they play at the Chataway. Mm-hmm. All these different areas that people just normally play music. And one of the things that they do also is they host a radio show mm-hmm. on Radio St. Pete every Thursday afternoon. They have the cover hour, and <laughs> they have the cover hour, and the cover hour kind of bridges the gap between traditional radio shows because there are a lot of radio shows where they'll do just popular music. Yeah. So you'll just hear mm-hmm. original artists playing original music that is already popular, top of the charts, yeah, and all that. Yeah, I was going to say, that. things that are just being streamed. Or there's radio shows where they'll play local artists yeah. playing original music yeah what they do with the cover hour is they have local artists playing popular music okay so it's a way to kind of make sure people are familiar with what they're hearing yeah but also introduce people to new artists and local artists so both mike and pat being their own artists yeah music they focus on americana music so that's everything from the 19th century to today and it's bluegrass mm-hmm. blues jazz rock country anything that you can think of that's classic american music nice they play and that's what their focus of the radio show but they're not really genre specific okay they'll play local artists of all kinds mm-hmm. uh, and they're very passionate about this just based on the idea of like an original artist got their inspiration from somewhere yeah, right. So if you hear the covers that somebody is playing, you'll get an idea of who they are as an artist. I was going to say, do they kind of give it their own spin? Like Mike and Pat, when they're playing these songs as like covers, is that their like spin on that song? Well, it's not all Oh, you're their talking music. about just like... Just somebody writing music in general from scratch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like so, so somebody who writes music. Yes. The songs they cover demonstrate their inspiration in their original art. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's very interesting. And Mike and Jones don't normally play their own music on the radio, I believe. Cool. But I think they have. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure I would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would. But they are looking for submissions. They they ask people. You can go to um, the Radio St. Pete website and go to the Contact Us tab. And they you can reach out and send in a broadcast quality MP3. And they'll play it. They'll be happy to play it. Um, they're always looking for new songs to add to the catalog of Radio St. Pete. Mm-hmm. And... It's, it's really interesting to see how passionate people can be because you listen to one of your favorite songs and it's not something you wrote, obviously, mm-hmm. and you're connected with that song and the person who wrote it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but when you hear somebody else play that, it brings you back in a different way. 
yeah it's because a it makes you think form. of those memories yeah. without thinking of the song as a whole mm-hmm. um it's cool to hear songs like in that cover version yeah sometimes yeah it's it gives it's, it a different light it's I always think. one of my favorite things to see like some of my favorite artists will do like the Spotify studio sessions. Oh, yeah. Where they'll those do like one of so their good. most popular songs and then they'll always do a cover. Mm-hmm. And those covers can be like, obviously that's a little different because it's like an artist I already like. Yeah. But it's an artist showing one of their songs that they like yeah. to play. And I grew up a musician. My dad and I, we would play um, shows together or mm-hmm. a couple times and we would come together with songs that we both liked and we would cover those together and then we would show each other songs that we liked and cover those together and it expanded both of our music knowledge and yeah. our love for music because right. I'm not a big fan of or I wasn't a big fan of the Grateful Dead and my dad wasn't mm-hmm. a big fan of Arctic Monkeys but when we covered a song by the Grateful Dead together oh, and Arctic so Monkeys crazy. song together it kind of bridges that gap yeah definitely and I think one of the things that Mike really stressed was how there's so much good music that's already been written. Yeah. And there's so much good music still left to write, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. But that good music that's already been written needs to stay around. Yeah. Because it's inspiring people for a reason. And you can trace your favorite artists today, you can trace their inspirations all the way back to the beginning of music. Yeah. Like when when musicians first started becoming a figure. Yeah. And all the way back to classical music or something. Mm-hmm. You can follow the, this person was inspired by this, and yeah. then this person was inspired by them, and it goes all the way back until today. Yeah, you can definitely see that with like people making samples mm-hmm. in songs, too. Yeah, you grow. Like, you hear it in the background, you wait, oh, that's from that song. Like, they're using mm-hmm. that. And yeah. you think about how they grew up hearing that in their house. Yeah. And their parents grew up hearing that, and their parents grew up hearing the person that inspired that person to make that. So Isn't it, just it cool when you going. listen to a song and it like puts you back in time mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, I remember when I listened to this when I was like this old. Exactly. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of that one Foo Fighters song that I was like, oh, is it Learn to Fly? That was like, or what was it? The one with the weird music video? Yeah. Everlong. <laughs> Everlong. Uh, that music video made me really uncomfortable as a kid. Every time I listen to the song, I'm like, Ooh, this reminds me of watching it on VH1 or like some music video channel. <laughs> we were just talking about because we sat down in the wine house oh, and yeah. they were playing Mr. Brightside by the Killers and you were like, when I was I younger, remember, I used to tell my dad to put on this song so I could dance. Yeah, so, I'd be like, Dad, play that song where he's like, jealousy. <laughs> like I would do that and I'd dance for my family just like, wah, 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 wah. and that's But how it's I also go. like you hear songs that you don't even realize are like, like, we were singing earlier Close to You by Frank Ocean. Oh, yeah. And that's an interpolation of, I don't think it's called Close to You. It's mm-hmm. by, um, not the Cranberries. It's by somebody. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. The Carpenters. The Carpenters. Oh. Um, I don't think it's called Close to You, but yeah. it's like, uh, why do birds suddenly appear? Oh, so it's the same time? tune. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so it's wait, something like that, cool. and it brings you back to that. Yeah. And. It's it's really interesting to think of how like a cover can be so simple as the yeah. same guitar riff, yeah, or the same song yeah. entirely. I'd and, be really interested in hearing their covers of songs too. Of just and artists do a really cool job with like putting their own spin on it. Yeah, uh, this is for most of our audience. This is not you're not gonna get it. But <laughs> you know how Lil Uzi Vert released on his most recent album he released um a cover of chop suey by system of a down it's a weird thing Wait, really? but he, he released a cover of chop suey and it's like two very different artists yeah. but like he loves the song so he put a spin on it right it's cool this this stuff is really really cool and as somebody who plays music i'm always looking for like a song I like, I'll sit mm-hmm. down and I'll figure out the chords to it. Yeah. But I'll play it differently than the recording because I'm playing it how I want to play. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a if different, your a sound. different strumming pattern or mm-hmm. faster, slower. Yep. Different melody or rhythm. It's like it's still the same lyrics and still the same song technically, but you're yeah. doing it a little differently. Absolutely. Yeah, um, that's a, that's exciting and fun for them. I'm excited to hear more about their yeah. performances in general. Yeah, and I don't know if anything really 
like you said, artistic. I don't know if anything really screams Gulfport more than music. Um, um. Maybe animals, pets, perhaps. Have you walked down the street and seen somebody in a stro- have a stroller and you look inside and it's not a baby? Well, have you seen the dude who has a motorcycle with the chihuahua up front? No. He puts his chihuahua on the motorcycle that with little amazing. helmet and goggles. That's amazing. They love their dogs here. People love dogs. And we love your dogs, too. In Gulfport, for sure. It's our favorite thing. So did you guys know <laughs> that today, May 21st, which for us it's today, they just reopened the large dark dog park in Chase Park. Mm-hmm. So if you guys didn't know, there are two dog parks, a small one and a large one, depending on the size, um, right in Gulfport, depending on the size. <laughs> small one or large one, depending on the size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like just a smaller park. That's what I'm going for. I know. Sorry, guys. That was confusing. <laughs> it's not like this really big open field that we're calling a large park. <laughs> for dogs no it's it's a it's for the size <laughs> it's for the size yeah the size, size of the dog matters. Yep. no <laughs> <laughs> back to the scheduled program <laughs> today they announced that the dog park reopened after being closed for renovations since like the beginning of April at least. So Pat, they were talking about the dog park at an April uh, city council meeting, right? Yeah, it was about a month ago that they started to, not started to, but they talked about it and the city, they recognized the issue. I mean, when you have a bunch of big dogs going there every day, yeah. grass gets ripped up like that. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> it's dumb. They are digging. So they said, well, it's incredibly expensive to resod it. So like they only do it, I think they yeah. said once a year, maybe twice a year. I yeah. can't remember. It's really expensive to do that. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to look up options to figure out how to not need to do that. Yeah. And they talked about a lot of things, but, excuse me, they talked about a lot of things, but one of the things that they really focused on was decomposed granite. Okay. So you think about granite, as like countertops and stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say. But a lot of local dog parks, I believe St. Pete Beach, they have decomposed granite already, Ooh. and it's clean. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it doesn't get ripped up. Yep. They, it's safe for dogs yeah. to like walk on because it can. Obviously, you're thinking like they're walking on sharp Cave rocks and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Like that okay. sucks. Um, and it's environmentally safe, and it's relatively cheap. I believe they did three quarters of the dog park and resotted the other quarter for just under $12,000. Nice. So I, I, Tom Nichols, the public works director, he was kind of spearheading this and talking mm-hmm. about, well, these are our options. Here's the cost. Yeah. Um, him and his department have been really working hard to make sure that they get mm-hmm. the best possible option. And they decided on decomposed granite. Nice. So after they put it in, they reopened. Nice. And where are we at with that today, Kim? Yeah, so they they did have some comments. They posted this on Facebook. That's how I found out about it, was that they posted on Facebook, hey guys, we're opening back up again. And a lot of people in the comments were excited, but there were a good few that were confused on what this meant. Some people felt like the large dogs were not getting the the best treatment compared to the small dog park. Like they were like, where's the, all the grass that they're going to be able to roll around in and sniff and, and have fun. No, no guys, it's okay. They still have grass. There is still grass there. It's just. And, and even so the decomposed granite is not just like, like we would be like walking on the sand or something. Yeah. It is made for this purpose. Yeah. It's safe for them to play in. Mm -hmm. They're going to enjoy it. And yeah. it's still the dog park. They're still going to have an exercise area and a play area, a uh, place where you can take them for a nice morning. And yeah. It's, it's still going to be fun. Yeah. And there's <laughs> still trees and such. So if they want to like sit in the shade, they can. And yeah, they this can, doesn't it, ruin the dog park. No, still, I swear. Still take that your dog to the dog park. It looks great, guys. It really does. Both of them, they look great. And it'll be a lot better than mud and holes and oh no God, grass absolutely. and all of that. 
Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. you're gonna, you would hate if you had to bring your dog to the dog park, then they get all dirty and then get in your car. Ruin your car. <laughs> Come on now. I'm just saying guys, it's okay. So they have that reopening now and everything is grand in Gulfport. Well, speaking of dogs, I heard that our our own civil protector, oh, Banjo here, has been putting in some work on the streets. Oh yeah, he keeping had keeping Gulfport keeping Gulfport safe. Yes, he keeps Gulfport on. Take notes, in, Mayor Henderson. I'm yeah. kidding. You're no. great. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he does just as well as Mayor Henderson. <laughs> he is heroic. He is courageous. Oh, I'm talking about banjo. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, just okay. for those of you who don't know who banjo is, banjo is Gulfport's 2024 pet mayor. He is actually uh, he was titled that back in February by Gulfport Arts and Heritage. They do a fundraiser every year that raises money for the. The organization and one St. Pete um, Animal Rescue, which ended up this year being Friends of Strays. And Banjo was the nominated winner. He he won he raised over like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, I think, I I think it was fifteen oh seven or something. Something like that. Yeah. He came in first, guys. Everybody voted for him. He is actually our first uh <laughs> pet mayor with a physical disability Mm -hmm. so if you guys haven't seen him around he is a nine-year-old paralyzed rescue who has a wheelchair uh just his back two legs so he's got these big (laughs) wheelies and he's just walking around town and he loves to sniff out everywhere in gulfport he (laughs) his family actually reported back to us the amount of times he has done his little paw patrol routine it says banjo thoroughly sniffed 4,427 Gulfport spots as part of his routine checkup but even one of these times when he was on (laughs) patrol he encountered a coyote I don't think that was the sound I was thinking Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cha-ching, cha-ching. So, Banjo, being his courageous, heroic self, he saw, as he was walking around doing his little sniffing, he sees this thing cross the, walk across the street. He's not really sure what it is, but it makes his hairs stand up on the back of his neck. He's walking across 31st Ave in Clinton Street with his owner, Ed. And... As soon as he notices this being cross the street, he starts going. He is growling. He's barking. And Ed has him on the leash. This dog starts sprinting down the road. Just going at this coyote. The coyote gets scared. I would be scared, too. If I'm seeing these big wheels come at me, big, large barks, I would be running. So the coyote starts going. He's like... I gotta get out of here. Every couple couple of uh, apparently about twenty yards or so, Ed said he would turn around to check if the Banjo's would. still go- yeah the coyote yeah. trying to check if Banjo's still on his tail. Mm-hmm. He is one lucky coyote that ba- Banjo did not get him. He, Didn't Ed say he, that he he thinks that that coyote's not coming back to go for? Oh, absolutely soon? not. I wouldn't. No, because mm-hmm. he is a danger. He's a potential threat to society in Gulfport, <laughs> and Banjo is here to <laughs> to save the day. Per usual, this is why people voted for him. I don't. I don't even think people understand how much he put on the line. Are I you really going to yawn a over a, a hero, a town hero? Put some respect on Banjo's name. What is your? That is outrageous. I'm so sorry, Banjo. He we does, love you, Banjo. He does not reflect my emotions and feelings towards you. I think you are amazing. You are inspirational. And you make me a better person every day. Banjo, you make me appreciate the city that we don't live in, but we come yeah, for work. Yeah, we work here, but we both live in St. Pete. Um, it's really expensive here. So it's really expensive in St. Pete. Yeah. Yeah, but I found a place, so I'm fine. 
I uh, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> anyways, Banjo, thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Banjo. In we appreciate detecting you. any any harm to the city in making sure downtown Gulfport is up to code and safe for everybody to enjoy. And if you see Banjo around, thank him for his I would be saluting valiant him service to our city. Thank you, Banjo. Thank you, Banjo. And thank you to all of you for listening to this week's Gabcast. WGAB, a Gabber newspaper production. This is Cam. I'm Patrick. And we'll talk to you next week. Hopefully Bye. with Kathy back. <gasps> Kathy! Kathy with a cop next week? Dude, that'd be kind of crazy. Kathy with a cop, maybe? You guys were spared um, from Patrick with the police. so. Yeah. No. We could have done Cam with a cop. I don't know if it hits the same as Kathy with a cop. Woo! Woo! Yeah, so see you guys next week. Bye.